Hey guys, Rounded Tic Tac here bringing you another video. Today we're checking out the Coco 45. But first, let's talk about power creeping. Power creeping, uh, we gave you the definition in the beginning of the video, but it's basically when something new comes out in a game that replaces something old because it's just better. The developers have learned more, they have new rules for themselves, and they use those rules according to the new content coming out. So in this case, the Coco 45 is basically a better version of the Space Invader. The Space Invader, I can hear you saying, what is that? Well, it's touted to be one of the worst pistols in the game. Not many people have ever leveled it up or even used it because it's that bad. It has many negatives to it and we're going to go over them and compare it to the Space Invader. But now you know what power creeping is, let's get into a little bit about the gun itself. The Coco 45, what's wrong with it, is it worth it, and some things that I thought that could make it more unique and probably a better pistol. So let's check it out right now, this is the Coco 45. So let's talk about the pros, it has decent damage, it's got a semi-decent medium reload, piercing and bouncing bullets, decent fire rate, and it doesn't cost a bacon, and what I mean by that is comparing it to the space pistol. Uh, the cons are the projectiles are not hit skin, they are projectile speed, which is a big con. Can't burn the big boys, they explode propanes, and it's got this really, really weird hit detection that I'm going to show you in the video. So is it worth leveling up? I'm gonna get that out of the way right now in the beginning of the video and then I will give you my thoughts and show you some cool stuff that you might be able to do with it. But is it worth it? No. If I was a new player, I would be very upset if I spent my gold on this pistol. There are pistols that do similar things, there are pistols that do more damage, there are pistols that just are all around better weapons. This gun is very niche. You're going to use it in very specific situation and it has a very cool interaction with the enemies and the terrain and stuff like that but it's not used in the sense of every other gun in the game which might be a good thing so if you are into that kind of stuff then yeah pick it up and use it but we're going to compare it to the space invader real quick and another weapon in the game called the bolt bolt which are the only pistols that technically pierce anything and we're going to see if it stacks up holds up to the bigger badder original piercing pistols this is power creeping as you can see right here every gun that's been coming out has been able to roll this one crit chance two crit chance or double crit damage and guns back in the day just didn't have this option it was either one or the other and then a utility perk such as magazine size or reload speed now you can basically roll all new guns much differently than you could of the old ones and this is that power creeping so technically the Coco 45, we're speaking strictly DPS, is going to outperform most guns that are older because it can roll better. It's really hard to compare weapons in Fortnite because if they don't have the exact same rolls, then it's almost impossible to get decent numbers. But hopefully, this will give you an overview of how similar these weapons are. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, not many people use the Space Invader, so you guys probably don't really know what it is or has have seen it. But let's go over the numbers real quick. 74,000 to 72,000 in favor of the Space Invader. And this is interesting because this Space Invader is built for utility. It's like double mag size, double other things. It really doesn't hit uh, that hard, but it does decent damage. That's why it has a magazine size of 37. But what's really interesting to talk here is the range. As you can see, the Coco only has 5,000 and the Space Invader has 10,000. This somehow relates to how many bounce shots the projectile gets. Can't figure it out exactly, but it does have something to do with that. If you shoot it in a tunnel, it bounces less on the Coco 45 than it does on the Space Invader, and it has something to do with the range. The range on the Space Invader has 10,000, the one on the Coco has 5,000. So, hypothetically, or just to break it down easily, you'll get 10 bounces off the Space Invader and 5 bounces with the Coco 5. However, 
the Coco 45 has a faster reload and a faster fire rate. So it kind of averages out. But again, this gun is used for very niche circumstances and I'm going to show you them. But let's first take a look at the Bolt Bolt, the other piercing pistol in the game. So this is where power creeping comes into again the bolt bolt cannot roll double crit damage one crit chance which you want on most pistols however the bolt bolt probably is still the winner here it has a higher headshot damage multiplier more damage usually anyway as it just hits harder and it's not projectile it is hit scan so your bullets are going to hit your targets uh, the video is getting a little longer than i would like so let's jump into the gameplay and show you some of the stuff that this coco 45 can do I'm not talking crap about the Coco 45. In fact, I like the gun, just when you're making YouTube videos, you have to think what your audience is going to like. And the vast majority of players are either brand new because the game's on sale, and this might be their first legendary pistol that they have access to, or they're in Twine Peaks and Candy Valley. That's where the vast majority of players are currently. So I'm just trying to bring you guys some ideas on how to use this gun. So. We do know that it's power creeped up above the other piercing pistols, but does that mean it's better? Not necessarily. This gun with its projectile speed is very hard to hit single target damage. It's not going to be your everyday use gun. It's not going to be your siege breaker. It's not going to be your whisper 45. It's not going to be your last word. Speaking of pistols, it's just not usable in that way it, it has to be used in certain situations and in those certain situations it really shines that specific situation which you guys can see behind you is for kill tunnel so we didn't want any damaging traps inside the kill tunnel and this is also where you're going to see the weird hit scan what it, i don't even know what to call it the enemies literally freeze and lock up if you played this game when they released the shotgun outlander this was the same thing as you can see right there they're dead, but then they just disappear. This makes it really hard to know how much more damage you need to do. How many more bullets do you need to shoot to actually kill these things? And this is a huge drawback on the weapon, but something that most likely will be fixed. It really lags out the game. The enemies no longer die. They just dis freeze and disappear. But we wanted to see if this was a viable situation, building a tunnel like this. This is how the gun's supposed to be used. We originally tried this on a regular map and there just weren't enough enemies spawning so we jumped into a level 94 four man and we two manned it pretty easily both only using the coco 45. what we did is we built tunnels with just slowing traps with stun lights and frost traps and just shot the projectile down the lane and it seemed to have worked the only issue like i said is we never knew when they actually died but that also becomes a problem these propane husks that will walk into your vase eventually we're trying to figure out if the projectile actually blows up the propane and we couldn't get a definitive answer but dollars to donuts i would say yes uh we had some situations where we found a propane husk and we shot the present with the coco 45 while he was holding it and it didn't explode or it didn't ignite but as soon as they drop it on the ground if one of those projectiles does happen to hit it it does explode and therefore the whole tunnel strat is kind of dead the first time a propane walks through you guys know the agony of having 37 propanes in your tunnel and you ignite one it's over but you can see right here the pistol does a lot of damage in certain situations it clears out the tunnel super super fast i just wish it was a little more viable and i really wish that the the hit potential wasn't bugged and the enemies lock up and freeze it only seems to happen on bounce shots but in my opinion the pistol could just be better they could have changed a couple of things to make it a little more unique i'm gonna go over that right there and hopefully that'll give you an idea of where i wish this game would go so what could they have done different to make the gun a little more unique because as i said it's a power creep gun and it's basically the space invader it's a better version of the space invader a pistol that nobody really uses so what could they have done to make it a little better and by the way since it bounces it doesn't go through uh shielders or and it doesn't go through refrigerator doors which leads to the quote unquote piercing shot to not really be be 100 piercing but 
in my opinion they could have made this gun very unique they could have made it since it shoots marshmallows i'm pretty sure why not have after five shots a slow field ends up on the enemy or uh it drops little puddles that's slow something similar to what the husks do themselves in those certain modifiers i thought that would be a really cool idea but the best idea if this is the gun that you're going to use in kill tunnels where it shines and actually does a lot of damage then why not lower the base damage to let's hypothetically say 5,000 but every single time the bullet bounces it increases by 5,000 so by the fourth or fifth bounce you're hitting for a hundred K and it really decimates but it actually provides initiative to bounce those shots since that's what this gun is technically made for why are you going to bounce shots when there's no point in doing so that would have been my suggestion i would have made the it have a unique last perk and have it slow after five consecutive shots put down like a little slowing field of marshmallows and lower the base damage and make it so bounce shots do more damage leading you to actually use it use the mechanic as it's intended the last thing that i want to talk about real quick is boss fights now this gun isn't used for burning smashers or anything like that but it can be it just takes a little prep work what you're going to want to do is make sure you drop a wall or a box inside or around the boss and or smasher. If you box yourself in, the bounces will hit them four to five times every time and it can really, really annihilate any boss. But doing so is a little difficult and takes a little time to set up and maybe just a little bit of practice. So my final opinion is it's a good gun that has a chance for multiple hits on the same target if you build behind them or you know in front of them and it's really really good in a trap tunnel but to use it effectively and just shoot straight with a wall in front or behind around the corner just shoot it is inconsistent for me the damage just doesn't work all the time if you can funnel or line up a group of husks where they don't move much or unpredictably it might work really well and do a lot of aoe damage compared to other top tier guns nevertheless not the best damage for open field shooting that's why it's not going to be your new last word and i'm guessing the projectile without the hit scan is just a pain in the ass for console players with that all being said those are my final thoughts guys thank you so much for watching this video we'll check you out next time if you want one of these for free just come to stream twitch.tv slash round and tic tac say you saw the video and i'll give you a gun if you want one thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you on the next one tic tac out